Hey, 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 everybody, what's up? This is Phil John. Welcome to another episode of Phil John's VIP, where I uplift and highlight some very, very, very special people that have been a part of my journey and my process for over the next for the last couple of decades. And tonight is no different. Tonight, I am, I have the privilege of bringing to you a man that has been in this industry for multiple decades. He has photographed the likes of Carol Channing, uh, Kelly Ripa, um, Tony Randall, you know, and the list goes on and on and on. And, um, and yours truly, he's actually had an opportunity to photograph me. And I have to say this about him, that he's probably one of the most dearest, sweetest, down to earth, gentleman that you will find in this industry. I think that he cares about people, he cares about his clients, and he makes every experience possible one that you will want to have again and share with others. So I'm excited to talk to him. Mr. Jeffrey Hornstein is joining me tonight. So I'm going to let him in. Did he request? I, I don't see him yet, but... um. I'm excited that he's here. Shout out to my boy Paul from the Gentleman's Corner. The Gentleman's Corner come on every night. Uh, and on, every Wednesday night, they jump on. Um, and they really just talk about life and love from a man's perspective. And I used to actually lead them in on Wednesday nights. But unfortunately, um, I had to kind of shift my show to Saturdays. But... Every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock, check out the Gentleman's, Gentleman's Corner on IG Live. I'm still waiting for my guest. Now listen, let me just say this. He's a baby boomer. And baby boomers sometimes don't really get the memo until late. So I had a conversation with him and he said he would be here. So we'll just wait if if, if I'm still talking to you and he hasn't chimed in yet he's probably figuring it out and is probably going to text me so everyone fingers crossed because we def i definitely want you guys to to meet him um it's a rainy saturday here in new york city um and things have been going pretty pretty well you know i i'm so grateful for the opportunity that i have every night every saturday night to come in and talk to you i'm blessed that i'm have i've have this platform. I'm not going to say that I've created the platform, but I think that I, I'm so blessed that I have this platform to be able to sit out and talk to you guys um, about the things that, you know, I, I love and the people who I respect. And uh, there's been a lot of people in this industry that I've, that I've come across throughout the years who I truly do uh, have a great admiration for. So, you know... And to be able to speak to them and, and kind of give them their flowers, so to speak, um, is, is, is a joy for me every time I'm able to do that. And uh, I don't take it lightly. I'm so happy to be in a position where I'm able to share the platform with so many people um, who are actually doing the same thing that I'm doing. And um, that's why I uh, shout out people that I do. Um, Rebecca Dupas who comes on also on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Uh, she's actually doing her thing um, uh, on Wednesdays at 7. And her guests are phenomenal. She's a poet, author, and um, she has some amazing guests on her show. And uh, so check it out on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. So it is now four minutes after eight and my guest has not arrived yet. So I need to go check on him or he's probably lost again. So we're probably going to take this again. Paul, thank you, my brother. I see you. Um, but I have to go search for. OK, no, I don't have to search for my guest because he has arrived. Um, and, and he has, okay, so I take back all the baby boomer jokes that I, that I said <laughs> from, from the beginning and, uh, it, this is going to be fun. So without further ado, 
Um, I'm going to bring on my guest. Once again, he's been in the industry for decades. He's one of the down-to-earth, dearest, sweetest photographers that I've had to work with. Um, and his, his ledger of work and his contacts, you would never know that he's that well connected because of his humility and his grace. So I am so proud to introduce to those of you who do not know who he is, Mr. Jeffrey Hornstein. Let me bring him in now. Let me see. Jeffrey, are you there? Fingers crossed because you were late. Hey, I know, <laughs> dude, dude, the, the internet it stopped working. <laughs> I mean, you know, doesn't it figure? I mean, holy I, crap. Anyway. How's your lighting? Are, are, are you good? Yeah, I, I, and I have myself positioned like right here. Let me see. Let me get that light right. Because I wanted it to be like really nice. Can you see me? I can see you. You see me, right? I want it nice and soft, the light, you know, because yeah, it, 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 I'm not 20 years old, so I got to have it soft, you know? Let me grab my beer. Wait, wait. Oh, wait. Hold on. I'm going here. Oh, I was telling, I was, I, was, I was saying before you came on, I said, listen, I said, you know, he's a baby boomer. So I'm it a takes baby boomer. <laughs> but I know what I, no, it, it, something's glitched with the internet, you know? That happens. You had a hard time getting on. I got on fine, but like when the minute it like got to be like eight o'clock, it said no internet connection. Wow. It was like, of course, it's like Murphy's Law, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay? Look, ah, another drinker. <laughs> I don't want to because I want to be clear, and I want to make sure the attention is on my guest. Yeah. So, how are you, Mr. Hornstein? I'm fine. Thank you very much. You know, just had a productive day. Good. Uh, very good. Um, you know, it was a nice day. Uh, thought about going to the gym, but um, I'll do that tomorrow. Why not? It's raining outside anyway. Yeah. So. It's been raining all week. It's the worst. It's not so good. But, you know, sometimes this kind of light, when it's, like, not if it stops raining, it can be really good for like um, outdoor shots. I think, I think maybe when we shot, it, um, it was, was like little, slightly little overcast. Yeah, it was a, and like I kicked it yeah. up with a uh, reflector, you know, with a film yeah. car, and um, and that and it turned out really nice. I mean, you're you're a really photogenic guy, anyway, Phil. Well, thank you. I appreciate you that. You really well, are. It's, you look it's, great. It's your work. It's your work. It, you you, you know what? You got to bring something to, but you know, I always say this, the actor has to bring something to the table. Yeah. If you don't bring something to the table, then, you know, it really makes a photographer's job hard. Yeah. I mean, the, I, I find that the most successful shoots that I have mm -hmm. are ones where, you know, the actor gives back. Yeah. And that's so important. And that comes with training and that comes with confidence. Yeah, you know, I mean, you got to have that confidence. Because a lot of people step in front of the camera and just don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. Yeah. And you know, this is where I think like one of one of my my strong points there, shed a little more light on the subject. Oh, that's good. Uh, <laughs> that's, good. Um, that's a better angle too. I better yeah. freeze my head. I'm gonna freeze my head right here. <laughs> you know, so like, <laughs> um, yeah, like, I think that's part of where a photographer's job comes in, too. They got to think like a casting director. Yeah. You got to think if you're, if I mean, you got to, like, know what am I trying to bring out on my subject? Right. What's going to make them, what's going to sell them? Yeah. You know, you, you got to, you got to uh, get in there and, and, and really know how to direct, which, you know, you could be, like, have a million dollars worth of equipment, but if you don't know how to direct, yeah, <laughs> that's what it boils down to. Yeah. And with and with you, you know what the industry is looking for. You I do. I like to think I do. Is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like you. It, it, it's like I feel like 
people are in trusted hands with you. Yes. They know what they're doing, then you know exactly how to direct them to get the results that they want. Well, I also kind of enjoy seeing that, you know, that yeah. that that whole that whole procedure, you know, of uh like you gotta know how to size somebody up, you know, mm -hmm. and think where's this person gonna be marketed, especially now because you have actors access. It's not like the old days where you just had that one eight by 10. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that, that was supposed to be your shot. Yeah. That one eight by 10. And now yeah. they want to see a and lot it was of black and white. Yeah, and black and white, I remember that, and film, which, you know, I'm, I do love black and white, um, uh, but, uh, you know, more for the arty type things. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's more like, you know, personal projects. Yeah. And, um, you know, so, but the photographer, I feel, has to have the vision in their head mm -hmm. already mm -hmm. and know what it is you want. But that being said, you can come in on a photo shoot and I don't like to pre-plan it too much, you know, either. Mm -hmm. I like to say, hmm, where's the energy flowing? make it be kind of organic, you know? Yeah. Where yeah. is this going? What What do I feel now? I go a lot on um, gut feelings and personal feelings towards my subject, like how, you know, what 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 is this person going to get cast as? And who are they? What yeah. makes them tick, you know, in other words? And you have that sensibility to, 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 to pull that out. I think maybe it's that Scorpio sense. It could be. I was going to say, Scorpios <laughs> are very in tune. We're and very, in very empathic. What sign are you again? I'm a Leo. Oh, that's a strong sign. That's a, a lion. That's a, <laughs> you're a survivor. Yeah, that's why you're a survivor too. Yeah. So let me, let mean, me bring it. Let me bring it back to you because I want people to really get to know who you are. Yeah, I see. So they're on here, and that's cool. What? Um, where did it all begin for you? Well, it really began for me i've always liked the arts and um growing up my my parents were both writers and my mom is a rather well-known children's poet and um i was raised in an artistic environment and then when i came to new york i just wanted to party you know I just, <laughs> that's how it ended up, you know. I had done some acting, though, in Connecticut. That's where I'm from, Connecticut. And I had done some acting and really enjoyed it. So yeah. I always had a feel for that, you know. But then when I came to New York, I was working as a dancing busboy. And <laughs> <laughs> with the shorts, you know, and... um yeah, those were the days. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure ever for the grace of was ever for the grace of God. Yeah. But um, you know, so I was always around colorful people, interesting mm -hmm. people, lively people. Um and uh so I did that and then I said, Okay, I gotta try to go this straight and narrow, so I'm gonna get a job at a at a company and I did that and, you know, did data entry in the early days of, you know, computers and that was hell. I'm not gonna lie, that was hell. I mean, you know, I, I would sit there sweating. Like I can't, I, I couldn't even stand to be around these kind of people. Yeah, yeah. And I said, what, what am I doing this for? So like in my part time, I went to, with my portfolio. I started photographing people in this. I started my little my business in a little SRO, mm -hmm. you know, standing room only. And I would put the futon against the wall. And then the light was nice and people would come in. I started with the model eight. No, I started with people in the building. I would ask people in the building, can I take your picture? You know, and I built a little portfolio that way you know and then i uh brought it to some of the modeling agencies because that's what you did in those days yeah like elite models wilhelmina models different modeling agencies they gave me models to photograph so i started actually doing more fashion and i worked for a, a very good uh 
well, for a very interesting, very good uh, publication uh, called Men's Guide to Fashion, MGF Magazine. The Jerry Rothberg, the same uh, guy who uh, does uh, Circus Magazine, which is a famous rock magazine. It's no longer, but he is, he was a wonderful man. And he gave me a, a ch chance and a break. And I started doing magazine editorials. So from that point, you know, I would do other magazine editorials. And, um, oh gosh, I, I did one where I photographed, uh, remember uh, Madonna's tour with the, I guess it was the Vogue tour. And um, there was a dancer called Slam and we had him dressed up. It's a, it's a great photo. I have to find it and post it um, of him as a, in a gladiator outfit. So it was way ahead of its time, you know, right, with right. the short shorts and, it was cool. So that was for Detour magazine, which is now Flaunt magazine. Yeah. So, um, so that's how I started and got the feel of it. And along the way, um, I met some casting directors that were personal friends of mine, and uh, they sent me some actors. And um, I just started shooting more actors and more musicians and more authors and celebrity types and you know this and that. And I found that that was a better way for me to uh, make a living because uh, fashion, it can be kind of glamorous, yeah. but it don't always pay the bills. Especially high fashion. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. High fashion. And it's really, it's kind of even, I mean, entertainment business, I'm not going to lie. It can be, be really nasty and people aren't always the nicest. It's, it's a, as you know, it's a damn tough business. Yeah. You know, from your end, yeah. But fashion is a whole nother level. It can be a whole nother level of nastiness. Yeah. yeah. And stupid. I mean, not stupid. I, I shouldn't say that. There's a place for fashion. And I love fashion. But to make a living, there's only a few that can make a, a, a good living at it. So I like working more. I started. I know that even when the people who work in fashion for a long time, it kind of changes their personality a little. Oh, it does, man. It does. It it changes their personality, and um, like there's so much malicious gossip and all that kind of stuff. I try to stay away from that drama. I don't like that. You know, I just want to do the job, get the job done, and have happy clients. And and what makes me happy is knowing that I got great shots and that my clients are happy. So moving moving into moving into working with actors. Right. Yeah, I know that you know, and as I said in your in your bio when I when I when I put it out in the promo that <laughs> I love that good. by the way, you should be my publicist. <laughs> my my oh, God, you should be a publicist. Thank you. Thank you. you have a knack for this. You were always a people person ever since I knew you when you worked for Paul Michael. <laughs> Remember? Wait, Remember you came I, to the I studio. I, you know, Paul Paul gave us a shout out earlier today. And I, I saw said, he oh, did. Yeah, Hi, Paul. Paul right. Michael. And let me just say this. I remember I was interning for Paul Michael at the network, and Jeffrey's studio was one of my stops from dropping off some pamphlets over to him. I remember and when I first met Jeffrey, I swear to you, he opened the door, and I thought he was Barry Williams. Because you I remember so much <laughs> like Barry Williams to me. Yeah, you know, people he didn't said have, that. He didn't, I, have, he didn't have the grain. He was I didn't have to the gray, yeah. But I remember people have told me that, and uh, that's very funny. And I, I, I know once I was in a, uh, a club, and a drag performer was performing, and they said, "Oh, look, it's it's uh, Greg Brady." Greg. <laughs> so I was like, "I'll take." It. <laughs> I mean, he was a nice, nice enough looking guy, you know. I don't I, I I think he's still with us. Yeah, he's still. He's still. I think him and Christopher Knight, who played Peter, yeah. uh, have like the Brady Bros podcast. Oh. So, yeah. I didn't know that. You know, the the, the Brady family will never go until they go. You know, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're Unfortunately, the uh, father died early of uh, yeah. AIDS. Yeah. yeah. And the one who played the father, I forget his name. Uh, I wish I could. Robert Reed? Yeah. Robert Reed. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. But um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so you came, to, I remember you, you came to the studio on 13th Street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you, and I, you're always a very people person. So I think this is a great niche for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. that By the way, great. your skin looks great. Well, thank you. I don't thank know you. whether you're using. <laughs> No Botox yet, right? No, 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 but no. no, no, it's all natural. But I can see that glow. You have a nice glow. It's a nice Thank light you. setup you have. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. So with Go ahead. Your photographing actors, right? Yeah. Like I said, you have um, photographed some iconic people. Carol Channing, Tony Randall, Jeffrey Holder. What was those experiences yeah. like? Oh, man. <laughs> See, okay, so for, for quite some time now, um, I've been having this, doing this labor of love, this, this book that I want to put together. I am putting together, and I have, I've gotten about 50 of these shoots now. I want to get some more. You know, it's, it's tough. People always, when's it coming out? When are you going to do it? But you know, when you, when you do something like this, like a book like this, then you keep getting other special people and others. Yeah. And you don't feel like you want it. It's quite, it's not enough, you know? That, so, yeah. Okay. So I have some crazy stories about these people, you know, and really wild. And um, Carol Channing um, is a, was a very, um, She's a, a, quite a character, to say the least. Um, when we went in, she stays at this, um, I don't know, can you see when that, that's coming up or you, you don't see? No, I, I, I see the comments as they come up. Oh, the comments, but yeah. some people were not on my end, like where people are writing in, oh, hey, yeah, I, yeah. Okay, I, yeah. I we both, we both uh, are watching and come in. Okay, good, good. Well, a lot of people, I see people are joining. That's wonderful. Hello, <laughs> folks. Thanks for joining. <laughs> um, so Nico Quinones, Nico Quinones, Del Otley, who's out yeah. in LA. Both of them have been in the industry for a long time. Just uh, coming in. Thank you. Um, so uh, with uh, Carol, I went to her favorite hotel. I think it's the not the wool, the wool, the Waldemir Wol or something, Windermere or something. And a very old style hotel. And she was with the husband that was her high school sweetheart, Harry. They're both since deceased, God rest their souls. And um, so she's just what you imagine, you know, with the glasses, with the, but before the shoot even started, as we were setting up the lights, Phil, um, she, um, I hear this screeching from the other, from a room in the bedroom and she says in that famous voice I can't find my eyelashes <laughs> and she was crawling around on the floor the poor <laughs> thing. and um, she says I had them I don't know whether they fell off or what happened but it was in the days of film and I shot right. with the Mia 645 and um, black and white of course you know and so we ended up having to manually like with the that you used to bleach and dye had to put the paint the eyelashes on one of her eyes <laughs> how does she lose the eyelashes how does she move them how does she lose them it, it never came to fruition we don't know <laughs> <laughs> i mean just my it's just my luck i mean you know we never we never knew how it was crazy was she and um, with? oh yes a whirlwind yeah. Yeah, so that was very good. I got a great shot of her. These pictures of a lot of these celebrities and I are on the personalities section of my website, which, you know, the jeffreyhornstein.com. And um, so there's a picture I have of her with an old, the original cast album I took of Hello, Dolly. Wow. And she's standing there like, like, this with her, her and she's just struck the pose perfectly right on cue you know she's very much of a pro she was yeah. she was amazing and tony randall was how it started okay and uh some some folks i think i would hope most know who these people are 
Yeah, <laughs> the if, object, you if you don't, yeah, hopefully, I, I don't think, I don't think I, I have would. too many young millennials and Gen Zers that follow me. So most oh, okay. people that are probably coming in will know who Tony Randall is. Yeah, Tony, it was um, Mr. Just, New York at one point. Yes. Yeah. Tony, I originally shot at a circus on an elephant. Which I know, weird, right? I Ring, got a call. Was it Ringling Brothers at the Madison Square Garden? Yeah, it wasn't at Madison Square Garden. It was where they rehearse for the for the show in upstate New York. This one fellow contacted me. Said me and Tony are doing a show at, um, uh, I guess it was Avery Fisher Hall at Lincoln Center, or, or uh, yeah. And um, so he said. Um, I play the piano and Tony reads selections from Babar the Elephant. Wow. And I, it was a whimsical sort of a show, you know? And Tony had, had uh, the people say, oh, how did you find him? Was he difficult? Not in the least. I mean, and he started, he helped me start this whole thing, as a matter of fact. Wow. Uh, um, yes. So I photographed him there. And then I got this idea of doing a collection of famous, or they don't all have to be A-list famous, but well-known or very active people in the worlds of arts and culture over 60. So um, I got the idea of, of doing that. And so I said, who better to call than Tony? <laughs> so, you know, you pick up the phone and you call him. You're right, you're right. <laughs> yeah, that's how we did it, you know? <laughs> That's how we did it. Right, and right. I, I, I picked up the phone and I I said, you remember me? And he did. And so we arranged. I went to his beautiful um, apartment. It's two apartments in one. Mm -hmm. You know, he's also deceased. God rest him. But yeah, yeah. and he has a much younger wife, you know. And a, I know. I think he had a baby like a seven. Mm -hmm. I met the baby, an adorable baby. Adorable. He was like 75, 70, 72, 70, 72, yeah, yeah, 75, maybe. I'll have what he's having. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> but, but um, so Phil, um, anyway, I went there and it's the most, these celebrities and, and stars, they live, they're in another world. They live in another planet, you know, yeah. like. Yeah. It was two apartments knocked into one, and it was in the Beresford where I, I went back to photograph someone else. I'll t tell you about mm. magnificent building on. A lot of them live on Central Park West. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, and um, so we did that, and then afterwards, I went into his office and we talked, and he said, "Let me give you the names of my friends Eli Wallach, and Hume Cronin." Wow. A cocoon. And yeah. And Jessica Tandy's husband. Yeah. Yeah. And he was so helpful. And I called them up and they agreed to do sittings with me. Eli Wallach was a tough one. He, he came up the stairs and I in that walk up on 14th Street. Yeah. You yeah. know, remember the stairs? Mm -hmm. And he has had double hip replacement. He was like 84. Wow. 85. Yeah. And he told me all the great stories about Marilyn Monroe. And Tony told me about her, too. They they both, I know Tony said, well, we all love Marilyn. We all love her. But he said she was a pain in the ass because yeah. she was always late for the, for the shoot. <laughs> and they, and they, she would keep people waiting for hours you know she had a lot of problems so so uh, yeah, I, I you know we all love marilyn monroe i mean maybe not all of us but i i certainly admired her um and they told me all about those that's incredible you know these these stories and i know these people have been photographed by some of the most famous people in the world and yeah. so it was an honor and um with each of these shoots i do an interview so I, I like tape it and I interview them. So uh, that was really great. And then, gosh, some of the others, you would remember this one. Now I don't, you know, some of your audience might not, but Soupy Sales. 
Soupy Sales, yes. Yeah, the comedian. Yeah. Remember he was he had his own TV show back in the sixties. And he's the one who told probably the little, little older version of him. Y yeah. Yeah. He he, he told the kids to, to go into the parents' pocket and steal the money, remember? <laughs> yeah. So he got into some hot water with that. I can't imagine that now. So let me ask you a question. What, what, I, and I, 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 I don't, I, I know you, <laughs> when you came to New York, um, I'm sure New York at that time, I know, for example, I, I always tell people there's two different New Yorks. There's the Twin Towers, New York, and then there's yeah. the New York with the, uh, the Freedom Tower. I think that 9-11 was always, for me, is that that divide. That was that defining moment. Between the old New York and the new New York, right? You know? There so, were... with you uh, actually photographing one of the founders of Studio 54. Carmen you... D'Alessio. Yes, yes. Did you ever make your way into Studio 54? Yes. And if so, what that Several was... times. <laughs> it was... <laughs> I made it out, thank God. Because you don't want to know what went on in that. You don't want to know what went on in that balcony. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you know, and you know, it was amazing. The f I will be honest. I'm going to tell you. The, this is the first time I went there. Right. There was a bar, a club, in New York back in 1979, 80, called the G.G. Barnum Room. Now, it was one of the first clubs that catered to a transgender. Uh, I, I, I guess trans transvestite. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah, so yeah. you know, uh, clientele, and um, I met one there that night. Uh, you know, and her name was April. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, these these girls were were gorgeous. Though so she's. We went at like one in the morning over to Studio 54. We got right in. Wow. And it was amazing. I mean, the lines, it's no lie that the, the mobs yeah, yeah. outside were like amazing. It's, it was absolutely fabulous. I had an aunt who went into <laughs> Studio 54. Yeah. And the story was crazy too. She actually, it was a friend of hers that um, uh, kind of cozied up to Daryl Strawberry. Oh and, yes, and then he, baseball player, baseball yeah. player, and they when they they once they started like cozy enough to him, he went in and he said they're with me, and that's how they got in. Yeah, that's what yeah. you got kind of like, you know, kind of be kind of do that. Yeah, yeah. And that was the first time I saw Cheryl, the model Cheryl Teagues, dancing with all the leather guys on the speakers, and yeah. everybody was doing, and. Yeah and everything else and yeah. drinking and everything you've ever heard about it is true everything it was beyond what do you beyond. what do you, what do you love most now today about what you do and how has it changed over the years yes okay well it has changed you know the first big change was digital mm -hmm. and for us veterans um, that was a big change. That was a big adjustment. And I was afraid of it at first. Yeah. Like, you know, is, is, I don't know if I can do this, you know? Um, but now I have to tell you, I, I wouldn't want to go back to film. I like the digital and, I, and I'll tell you why a few reasons, because it's immediate. I can show the client immediately what we're getting. Mm -hmm. They can say, I can say, oh, look at this one. They get excited. Like when they see the pictures, they're like, oh yeah, that, that looks great. Yeah, let's keep going in that direction. You know, that's one thing. It's, it's, it's much more of a quick turnaround. You know, you don't have to wait for the contact sheets. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, contact sheets now that I do are electronic. So they're sent to the client electronically. So, but we used to go to the lab and it was like, first the contact sheets. Then you had to edit the contact sheet. You had to mark off your face. Then they would come. Then they got to show their agent or their friend yeah. or whoever. Then they come back. I remember, I remember you, the contact sheets. In the you early. remember it? Yeah. Oh, you're young. I, I Yeah, wow. Well, you probably at the tail end, right? Yeah, yeah. it was the tail end. Yeah. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, and so we did the, the proof sheets and then the prints and then the retouching was manual. It wasn't on the computer. Now you just get on the, but you know, I had to learn Photoshop and yeah. you know, it was a big learning experience, a learning curve. And, um, but I, 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 I wouldn't want to go back because it's amazing what you can do now, even if you want to make your, your, uh, shoots black and white you know you you can there's so many different apps and so many different choices on the apps like i use lightroom a lot and photoshop and you can just like like i've been working with this one um guy who's doing a lot of hip-hop and um his name is demo and um we that's not his real name <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um Anyway, so we uh, have been working and I can create all sorts of really wild effects, you know, like a neon look or it's crazy. So yeah, Phil, I, I do like it. And, and you, you just really have no choice because yeah. also headshots yeah. went color. That yeah. was a big, that was a big thing. Yeah, I remember that, definitely. And I think it's kind of a good thing because you, people, don't aren't colorblind that yeah yeah we yeah. see color you know you, you know exactly what you're getting when you get yeah. it. And, it, and you know yes has there ever been any person that um that you wish you could have photographed or is there some or is there <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah like like I ain't dead what, yet. <laughs> what, what was what what are some of the people who you like well there was like, i would have i mean she's deceased i would have loved to have photographed elizabeth taylor mm. I would have loved to have photographed Cicely Tyson. She would have been amazing. Oh, you know, uh, Aretha Franklin, you know. I mean, I used to think I would love to photograph Madonna, but just leave it at that. Just the way she was. <laughs> Right, right. I get you know it. I mean, you get it. Get it. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. But, um, and then, of course, there's Sidney Poitier. Yeah. I mean, you know, somebody yeah. like him. I guess I'd love to shoot the editor-in-chief of Vogue on a wind tour. Yeah. I'd, that would be spectacular. I mean, I should approach these some of these people from my book. I'm not afraid to approach. Yeah. I recently, I recently had a wonderful singer that I photographed. Who's, uh, well, she's an iconic singer, Melba Moore. Yes, yes, Melba Moore. You know, who, who she's once amazing. Again, like you know, we've gotten to call her in in IG land, Auntie. Auntie Melba, I know. Yeah. So yeah. sweet, but you know what? Auntie is very, uh, she's very vibrant and she has a lot of energy and she's yeah. still kicking it. You know, she's still going out for those bookings and she looks great and she, yeah. you know, she's got plenty of energy and her voice, you know, she was known for holding this note the longest, she, she yeah. had a note. And she was also known as being the first um, black woman to win in her category a Tony Award for Pearly back in 1970. So, but, yes. but and, well, and of course, cast, she's an original cast member of Hair. Hey, yes, she yes. told me that. I interviewed her. She actually replaced, of all people who was in the show with her, Diane Keaton. Wow. Yeah, I did hear her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, it, it's wild. And uh, so that was very interesting. Mm. You know, so I just, you know, you got to have the the nerve to, to contact some of these people because I most, a lot of these people I get through word of mouth or through, through people I know. Yeah, yeah. There's a very famous editor in chief. And and if you want to ask me questions, if, I, if I'm going on about this. No, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm la la letting you have the platform to be able oh, to. Oh, okay. Okay. See, people are joining. I, I, don't, I don't want to interrupt. No, I'm glad I'm people are joining. But, but if you want me to ask questions, I have them. So I have oh, I five definitely... questions. 
I have five questions that I ask all my guests. That come. All right. Shout out to Maurice Lockner, who is a phenomenal singer and one of Tyler Perry's finest. He's been in several of Tyler Perry's plays, and he's been in the industry for a very long time. So, Maurice, thank you, my brother, for joining. Oh, me. hello, Maurice. Thank you. For um, so, my five questions. Right. Yeah. So the first one is this: What do you know about the industry now, opposed to what you thought it was entering in the industry? Yeah, wow. That's either, right. And I'm going for you. I'm going to say as a photographer, but just as the industry as a whole. What? what yeah. You thought was, you, what you okay. Started. Let me tell you something. Let me let me tell you. There's too much oversaturation in a lot of the in a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Everybody just wants to be a star. They don't seem to want to. A lot of people don't want to like learn anything about the craft of acting. And I'm not saying that you. I don't. I'm not one that believes you need to go to school and spend your whole life in school. But know the nuts and bolts. Yeah. It's not just a matter of looking cute on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> well. I, or like maybe it stuff, is, right? or how many Instagram followers you have. But I will say that in all areas, and photography too, and even makeup and hair, I think especially I find since COVID, yeah. for some reason, it's so oversaturated. It's like almost every other actor now says they're doing headshots. And it's a free market. They have every right to say that. But... I don't think they really have an objective view all the time because I'm looking at it because I'm not an actor and I'm looking at it. I have a photo studio, you know, not that you have to have a photo. You can do a lot of great things outside, but there's a certain understanding, different lighting, uh, all sorts of different uh, things, uh, knowing how to direct people objectively that I don't find, that I find there's no drama in the photo. It's just, mm -hmm. they all look the same to me, so many of them. Yeah. And, and the makeup, I have a, a peeve too about overly made up and overly Barbie dolled women with the hair, and then they're taking them outside. And I mean, casting directors these days tend to like more raw. They tend to like, well, they want to know what they're seeing. Yeah. Not even in, I don't think. And yet I see so many overly retouched photos, overly made up photos. Right. And then they're standing in the middle of the street. Like, who goes out like that unless you're <laughs> or one of the ladies who lunch on the Upper East Side? Right, right, right. You know? I mean, you see what I'm saying? I, so I think there's a, the, there's, you know, I, I'm I'm afraid we're that there's a lot of mediocrity out there, mm -hmm. and I think one thing I I do think is a good thing, because I think you want me to tell about that too, and that's that there's much more diversity. Yes, and I love that. Yes, in terms of ethnicity, age, size. Sex, I think. I think I, I, I wanted to say that I think that we had that at one point, but then it went away. But now it's making a return. Yes, in in in, in the uh, early seventies when we had shows like Barney Miller and Hill Street Blues, the early eighties, seventies, eighties. You had those great so much characters. diversity, so much diversity. Yeah, you know, there's, you're right. If I think about that, Phil, I'm yeah. thinking about it. They there was all different colors: Latino, Black. Absolutely old young character i love the i i love the older the character faces with yeah. the light that, yeah. you know the i love that because it, so, they, it made it, it made it real to us it made the characters real it made it real yeah. so you're right so that's coming back and also there's a lot of more opportunity for actors and a lot of opportunity in new york well yeah now that we're getting over the hopefully the um, of COVID and all, all that, which was terrible. But um, w in terms of the stations like Netflix. Someone said Jeffrey knows how to capture everyone's artistic potential. Who said that? I don't have a name. Thank you, whoever you are. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, I, I love that people are joining. At least some so, showed up. What advice <laughs> would you give your 19 year old self? Oh man. Just be, maybe not to be quite as reckless in life. Um, although, like Jessica Lange says, in said as playing the, wit, the witch in American Horror Story, some people go for the safety of the, some people play it safe on the merry-go-round and others go for the thrills of the roller coaster. So I don't really regret that. Yeah. A 19 year old self may have done some, but look, hell, I still like a good time. <laughs> right. yeah. I mean, I have friends up in the Heights and we go out, oh man, we went out on uh, the electric bicycles on 4th of July, all through the Heights and Harlem and all over the place. And uh, I was a little lit. <laughs> <laughs> so you know don't you still, stop having what fun. i love about you is you you still have this very youthful spirit that's, yeah. that's, that's willing to explore oh because you've got to you don't want to get um like cantankerous or yeah like yeah. setting your ways like you gotta know to jump on that's why i was so thrilled when you asked me to do this instagram yeah. live i've done podcasts before yeah i've done yeah. magazine interviews this is my first um instagram live well, well so you're well, thank my you for allowing me to be the first ig live you jump on i appreciate that yeah that means a lot to me i'm honored well that, yeah with. because it's it's a lot of fun actually you so know let me ask you a question go what, ahead what would you want what do you want your legacy to be ultimately i want it to be that um i started out a lot of actors and that they're working actors now that my photos helped. Oh, thank you, whoever you are. Oh, he said it's cha-cha. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, whoever, um, so I would like to say that I'm, I started a lot of careers. I know that for a fact. Um, and my other, the other part of my legacy would be that I lasted this long in this crazy business and that um, I photographed some of the biggest, most iconic figures of this 20th century, 21st century. When I look at so far at these, this list of people, Terrence McNally. Yeah. You know, wonderful guy, you know, so I mean, you know, uh, Helen Gurley Brown, the legendary editor of Cosmopolitan. Yeah. Yeah. These are people that are iconic. Yeah. So I like my legacy to be that he really he really shot some of the most iconic people and not as a paparazzi. Right. Um these are private collections, private photo shoots. What brings you different? Joy? Go ahead. What brings you joy? Wow. This is great. It's like the questionnaire in the end of Vanity Fair, almost. <laughs> um, you know, um, peace. And honestly, I took in a simple things sometimes, just getting together with friends, um, seeing the results of my work. Um, recognition. Um, also, my cat. I have a feral cat. She's a rescue. And it's taken a few years, but she finally lets me pet her. And wow. that's a huge accomplishment because she's a wild animal. Yeah, yeah. Now, tonight she got angry because I stopped petting her and she scratched me and drew blood. And after I gave her lobster. What? I gave her lobster today. <laughs> and she scratched you? Is that gratitude, you know? Is that gratitude? That's some gratitude, man. But no, peace at the end of the day, knowing that I did what I could, that I did the most with the day that I could. 
I see a lot of people that I asked, they're joined, they joined. What are you grateful for? To be alive. To have lived through the time I lived through, which was no cakewalk in some ways. And yeah. to be to be alive and to be practicing my art. Yeah. And um that's what I'm most grateful for. Because at the end of the night I always give thanks. I always give thanks to, and I'm not particularly a religious person, Phil. Yeah. I always give and, and uh, applaud, kudos to all that are religious and and those that aren't. I I mean, whatever. But I always give thanks Be, because you know, you, you you know, so many people we're, we're we've lost so many people, and doesn't it seem lately? Every time I look on Facebook. I don't yeah. want to be morbid, but it's yeah. like, it's, it's like death book. Right. Like right. I, I can't get away, you know, every time. You know what, you know what I, you know, I always tell people, I think that because of social then, media, because of social media, we know faster. Yeah. Like people have I, always come, people have always left us, but we, you know, back when we only had rotary phones, it would take months before we knew that someone had passed away. But now, you know, Instant. Like literally seconds. See, I'm not one of these people, though, that posts all my health and nonsense on yeah. social media. Yeah. More about the work. Yeah. And fun. If I have a go out to a fun restaurant, that gives me happiness, too. I like to, I like a good time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a good martini brings me happiness. You know. <laughs> and, and the fact that you survived the before. <laughs> when I think back... <laughs> There's been PTSD on PTSD. Yeah. But, yeah. you know. I mean, I was, I was young. I grew up hearing and observing the craziness of that time. Although it was good, there was a lot of um, uh, kind of like bad things that happened there were. as a result of it. So for me to grow up in New York and, and amidst the, the drug epidemic, the AIDS epidemic, and everything that happened during that time, it, we became, um, you know, I think my generation became a lot more sensitive and empathetic. Yes, that's true. Yeah. A lot of them are. Yeah. And let me tell you, it was no picnic. Yeah. You watched a show called Pose at all? No, I've heard of it. That's a good show. It, it, it kind of tells a lot about that. But like I was saying, there's so much good TV on and circling back to um the uh the shows and the opportunities now yeah i love my netflix you know yeah have you watched that sh this british show called top boy no it's about drug dealers in london it's no i really i did i did hear, hear about something like that it yeah. is such good. i gotta check it out you you've gotta check it out yeah you yeah. know i mean now, you had some other questions? No, that was the last one. That was the last one? Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> that this was fun. That I was could probably go all night. Five questions. That was the last one of my five questions. But um, I, have, I have to say to you that I think that, um, first of all, I wanted to thank you for coming and doing this and being open to do this. And My the honor. Fact, the fact that I think that, you know, the fact that our paths crossed, I'm so grateful for because I think that um, not only working with you, but being able to kind of sit and kind of receive from you all the all the all the um, the history and the lessons and the life lessons of the industry, and is to me that's so valuable and it should be treasured because that's something that I will take with me and will pass on to others. So you give I know your, you life, love your life your life not is not only for you but it's for you to pass on, for others to pass on. That's also a legacy. Yes, that is a legacy. Absolutely. You know, to pass on. Absolutely. And thank you for saying that. And I know you're, you're, you're very um, intuitive and very intelligent, very observant and, and talented too. I wish you. Thank you. The best with it. And uh, I see good things. Thank you so much. You know, we try. As hard it's as it not is. easy. It's also it's it's tough. It's all it's tough, man. Yeah. Let's let's not kid ourselves. Let's not beat around the bush.
yeah one tough business and and, you, and I, one thing that i one thing that i miss because of covid what do you miss that we did have before, I, you know years prior is community is to be able to have that community of artists and talent yeah. that we could see you know even when with with um with people stopping in person in person auditions it's kind of like we miss being able to see each other at auditions because sometimes that was the only time other actors we were able to see each other we, we or at the drama book store. or drama bookstore absolutely but that's back isn't it I, didn't lynn manuel i uh, think so yeah i think, I think there was a whole renovation of it yeah i haven't been since it reopened i haven't been but you're so right there's a sense of isolation i feel people are very there's a loneliness almost yeah a, a, a longing for communication that's been lost. But thank so, God we do have these things too, so that if you can't see each other in person, you can talk like via FaceTime or Zoom or absolutely. Instagram Live, you know? And you keep up, you, you know, it's good you keep up that positive message too. Yeah, I try to, I try I, my- I know you do. Yeah. Do. Thank you so much. I thank appreciate you coming, Jeffrey. Thank you, thank you, Phil. Thank you. I will. <laughs> ho or ho or hopefully soon we'll we'll be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully soon that we'll have can, a. Can, we can grab some coffee. I would love know. that. You know, Phil. I would love that. Definitely. Uh, that would be very nice, and and really talk. We'll talk about all the things we couldn't talk about on this. On, on live. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no. And, and I think I have I have some people I I want to since your way um potentially that's for your book that's always oh for my book yes yeah that's always appreciated yeah you know we should have coffee we'll grab it we'll grab coffee this show is great you have great guests thank you thank you so Interesting. much I, i'm i'm glad that they come and uh, interested in talking to me so, of course yeah. what's it you're very easy to talk to yeah yeah thank you so much have thank a you. blessed night Bless you. We'll be in touch. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Those who came in. Yeah, thank you. you. Be in love, be in light, but most of all, stay in peace. Yeah, absolutely. That's the best. Yes. All right. Have okay. a good night. Bye-bye.